Sharon, imaginations will tell.
you're done. To bed, all of you. <laughs> You are making me so embarrassed. Look, every day someone shows me such affection. But you're not anyone now, are you? Mr. Bubble, a nice thing to say. I don't know what's become of me. You know how severe I am. I must be no one cares. Then you're a cruel man, a very hard-hearted man and all. Are you hard-hearted, Mrs. Cordy? Dear me, what a very curious question coming from a single man. What can you want to know for?
I was eating a boy. Come on into my parlor. Five times, please. Cash upon liking, Mr. Bumble. Cash upon liking, if you please. Mrs. Savory! What is it? Will you have the goodness to come here a moment, my dear? What do you want? Well, what is it? I have told Mr. Bumble. Hello, Mr. Bumble. Hello, Mrs. Savory. That we may consider taking in this boy to help in the shop. Dear me, he's very small. Yes, he is rather small. But you will, Mrs. Savory. You will. I dare say he will in our food, Dick. But these work house boys are a waste of time. There's an expression of melancholy on his face, my dear, which is very interesting. I thought he would make an excellent coffin follower. A what? I don't mean a regular coffin follower, as in for grown-ups, but only in the children's practice. It would be very nice to have a follower in proportion, my sweet. A superb effect. The more I think about it. For once, just for once, you might have a decent idea. Very well then, boy. What's your name? Oliver. Oliver Christmas. I think your name. I, um... One of my children. You're Mr. Bumble. Me, Mrs. Selbury. How's that, Mr. Bumble? With four boys and one on the king for his destitute. Brings the boy into the world, takes one look at him, and probably dies without leaving so much as a forty named address. Dear, dear. Now then, Uncle Twist, do you think you could look like that gentleman up there? Perhaps. If I had a black hat. Never mind about black hats. The boy's quite right. Get the boy a black hat. He's simple. Stand there under the picture, boy. Can you give us your top hat? Can you really? It takes you
wouldn't want him on for very long. If you start checking your material. I suppose you don't know how I am, workhouse. Say I do. And Mr. Lower Claypool, and you, and me. Hello, Nella.
just staring at? Ain't you never seen a gent? No, I haven't. Tired? I've been running hard. Oh, I see. You must be running from the beak. Now, don't tell me you don't know what beak is. Isn't a beak what a bird's got? <laughs> My eyes are green. A beak is a magistrate for your information. Hungry? Starving. Got no mother? No. Father? No. Lovely weather we're having today. Uh, staying in London? Yes. Got any lodging? No. Money? Just a farthing. <sighs> you live in London. When I'm at home, I suppose you want some place to sleep tonight. Got anywhere to go? No, I don't. Then come with me. I know a respectable old gentleman who will give you lodgings for nothing. Who is this respectable old gentleman? Is he a charity gentleman? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Not exactly. But on account of I happen to be a particular favourite of Mr. Fagin. That's his name, Mr. Fagin. If I'm introducing you to Fagin, I better know who you are. My name's Oliver. Oliver Twist. And my name's Jack Dawkins, better known among my more intimate friends as Alfred Dodger. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Dawkins. Come to think of it, I ain't got no intimate friends. Well, what's the difference, Mill Pox? I said you're coming with me. Are you sure Mr. Fagin won't mind? Mind? Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. We've taken to you. Sounds strong. It's clear. We're going to get it along. Consider yourself well in. Consider yourself part of the furniture. There isn't a lot to spare. Who cares? What? Ever we got to share. If it's your chance to be, we should see some other days. Empty other days like grouse. Oh, the chance to meet somebody to foot the bill, then the drinks are on the house. Consider yourself a mate, ways of one out. No fuss, for that's for some consideration we can see. Consider yourself one of us. Consider yourself a fool. Consider yourself one of the family. We've taken to you so strong. It's clear. We're going to get along. Consider yourself willing. Consider yourself part of the furniture. There, this is a lot. Who cares? Ever we got to share. Nobody tries to be large and dark and dark for tea. There's a cup to see for all. Only it's nice to be handy with for only thing When the landlord comes to call Consider yourself for me We don't want to have no fault For that for some consideration we can stay Consider yourself one of us Consider yourself at home Put the bill, run it 
most intimate acquaintance. Leave him alone. We're all glad to see you, Oliver. Oh, 
fine and start. Good luck in your first job, my boy. I'll be waiting for you here when you come back. You can go, but be back soon. You can go, but while you're working, this place I'm pacing round. Still I'm safe and sound. Very well, but be back soon. Look at all that danger's lurking. Do not forget this tune. Be back soon. You can go, but be back plenty of pork and banker cheese. You should be for the thieves. We'll be quick and be back soon. There's a sixpence here for twenty. Ain't that a lovely tune? Be back soon. I don't know, son, I won't miss you. I love you, that's why I think you we owe no goodbye. Very well, but be back soon. Give me one long last look, bless you. Remember our old tune. Be back soon. Longer the same 
blushing rose ever since um papa. All together now. There's a little bit of tea there singing in the pitchy is back. The bin or the tin or the bit. If you got the patience, share your own imaginations will tell. Say what you want to hear. Um papa, papa, that's how it goes. Um papa, papa, everyone knows. They all suppose what they want and suppose when they hear um papa. Suppose what they wanna suppose when they get wrong, Papa. 
what's become of him? What has become of Oliver? As long as he needs me, as long as life. 
tissues are enriched with lotion. I could. Although, I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to that child. He's deceiving you, my good friend. He's had a fever. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. Have I been delivered some books from the bookshelves? Oh, no. I had some books to return today. Send all of them with him. He'll be sure to take them. Though, if he does, I'll be most surprised. Yes, can I take them for you, sir? Well, dear boy, very well, if you wish. Now, I'll tell you what to do. I want you to take these books and say you've come to pay the four pounds ten that Mr. Brownlow owes. Now, here's five pounds. Now, there's no need to rush. It's just around the corner. But I shall expect you back in ten minutes. Very good, sir. Now, Mrs. Bedwin, we shall see ten minutes. <laughs>
been stealing again? Come on, get on your own thieves, you bugger ones. Move it. She'll give you another suit for fear you should spoil this Sunday one. Why didn't you write and say you were coming? We've got something warm and for supper. Hello, what's that? That's mine! No, no, Bill. Mine, my dear, mine. You can have the books. That ain't mine. Mine and Nancy's, that is. I'll take the boy back again. Come on, hand over. It's hardly fair, Bill. Hardly fair and me, Nancy. Give it here, you aberrations, old skeleton! That's not half as much as needs that. He has style of ivory. You can't keep the bits free from old Mr. Brownlow. If he finds out you've got them, he'll be out here after you. So he'll be out here, will he? When did you tell him? Nothing! That remains to be seen. But if we found out you're saying anything, anything out of order, maybe I'll wait till that scoundrel's told him everything. Help, help! Stand up, you! The girl's gone mad, I think. No, she hasn't taken no thinking. Well, keep quiet, will ya? No, I won't keep quiet. All this violence. Try and run away. I won't stand by your feet, Sandy, you have got me a mold, ya? Let him be, let him be, or I shall see my mark in somewhere that I don't care if I'm with ya. Why, Nancy, you're wonderful today. Such a talent, what an actress. <laughs> Am I? Take care, I don't ever do it, because I'm warning you. The 
tough situation. Can a fellow be a villain all his life? All the trials and simulations. Better settle down and get myself a wife. And the wife would cook and sew for me and come for me and go for me and go for me and nag at me. The figure she would wag at me, the money she would take from me, a misery she'll make from me. I think I'd better think it out again. What a thinking cape. Anyway, I'd rather sleep. Anyway, left without anyone in the world and I'm starting from now. So how to win friends and to influence people? So how? I'm reviewing the situation. I must quickly look up everyone I know. Titled people with a station who can help me make a real impressive show. I will own a suite of carriages and run a fleet of carriages and wait at all the duchesses that are not as much as the fitting of my new duty. Tomorrow, do you? Magistrate! I think I'd better think it out again. Well, I'd better think it out again. Think it out again. Think it out again. Somebody! Who do I know? Nobody. All oh, my dearest companions have always been villains and thieves. So at my time of life, I should start turning over new leaves. I'm reviewing the situation. If you want to eat, you've got to earn a bob. Is it such a humiliation for a robber to perform an honest job? So a job and getting possibly, I wonder who my boss will be. I wonder if you'll take to me what bonus is he'll make to me. I'm not a later finish, later, no more later, no, but wait! I think I'd better think it out again. What happens when I'm 70? Must come a time, 70. When you're old and it's cold and who cares? If you live or you die. Your one consolation's the money you may have put by. I'm reviewing the situation. I'm a bad and I'm a bad and I will stay. You'll be seeing no transformation. But it's wrong to be a rogue in every way. I don't want nobody hurt for me or made you do the dirt for me. The certain life is not for me. It's getting far too hard for me. There is no in between for me, but who will change the scene for me? Don't want no one to run for me, but who will find a job for me? I think I'll have to think it out again. Hey! Sally, she's not been 
well. I can't tell you. 
somebody change? It's possible. Maybe it's strange, but it's possible. All my dearest companions and treasures, I've left them behind. I'll turn a leaf over, and who can tell what I may find?
a hopeless job on a Friday night because if you forget anyone, you either get a mum phoning you on Monday morning to say, why did you no mention? Or you get strapped with head with lips all over the place, never going to do another show. But we always like to make some people a wee bit special on Friday night. And the first person we would like to thank is the conductor of the orchestra, Mrs. Ned. <laughs> Thank you. 